Okay. Um, that's uh, all I want to say about indirect TCP. Let's talk a bit about snooping TCP. So this is the uh, the next. Uh, I said we're going to talk about three protocols. This is a, this is the second one. I don't make these names up. <laughs> um, okay, so the basic problem with indirect TCP is that um, the endpoints of the TC of the data connection are not the endpoints of the TCP connection. So if um, so the basic problem is packets can be acknowledged without arriving at the end. So the segmentation cause problems in indirect TCP because packets could be acknowledged before arriving. In other words, the connection was not end-to-end. -end. The TCP connection, that is, is not end-to-end. -end. So, um, Thing I said earlier about TCP, one thing I said last time about TCP is that its importance is as an end to end uh, protocol. So um, the fact that indirect TCP violates that, it's not actually end to end anymore, um, can cause problems. As I mentioned, like packets can be acknowledged and then not delivered. So here's how snooping TCP works. Figure. Let's call this figure three. So now we have a corresponding node, internet, connected to the mobile node. Now the entire the entire link runs TCP. Now we have an end-to-end -end link in snooping TCP. And where the snooping comes in is that the access point sits here and inspects the TCP connection and helps as necessary. Um, it can inject retransmissions to the mobile node. Uh, it, can, um, uh, it can basically help out the mobile node whenever it needs it. But the acknowledgment, packet transmission, and acknowledgement is end to end. There is no buffering on the AP? Um, there is buffering on the AP because the AP has to help out with uh, retransmission. So the AP is actually in this link. So I guess you could say. Uh, so the AP has a short time out in CN, and so if something comes out, the AP goes, it doesn't end, and well, that's a great transmission. Um, so this is, uh, I mean, in some sense, everything we've talked about so far, there is some kind of connection from the internet to the mobile node. It just goes through. I mean, um, this is schematic. So in fact, the AP is usually a foreign agent. So in fact, the connection will run straight through. Um, I'm depicting this schematically like so to indicate that the TCP connection is end to end and the AP does not directly, uh, basically the AP does not segment the TCP connection in two. Uh, so the AP just sits here, watches the TCP connection, and helps out as necessary. Okay, so here's what happens, here's how it works. So 
So. Mm. The access point, which is usually the foreign agent, is on the path. CN to MN. However, it does not segment TCP connection. So you can think of this as kind of like a wiretap. The, uh, the access point will, will be listening and can, uh, can inject packets, but it doesn't it's not like there's a there's a firm connection or a firm separation between the two sides of the, of the network leading up to the AP and leading up to the mobile node, as there is in indirect TCP. So basically it does not send an act to CN? No, that's correct. All the acts come from the mobile node. Uh, basically it's good. Say again? Uh, basically this is good. Um, Yes, so uh, yeah, generally the so the access point is usually the foreign the foreign agent. So yeah, it's acting as a switch. The switch a switch is usually thought of as a as a network player thing. So a switch is kind of uh, a rotor, basically a rotor like device. Um, so the CN and mobile node are the endpoints. So now we now we have our end-to-end -end connection. Okay, so what happens is that as packets go by, <laughs> the AP, the buffer packets. AP is watching the TCP link, and as each packet passes through it, uh, it will grab those packets and put them in its buffer. But it won't; uh, it won't otherwise interfere with the connection. So what it will also do is it will watch or assume. packet will go from corresponding node to mobile node, and the access point will store it. An ACK will go from mobile node to corresponding node, and the access point will observe that ACK. On the other hand, uh, a packet can go from the corresponding node to the mobile node, and no ACK will return. So the access point will observe that. However, the access point already has that packet in its buffer. So if the access point believes that, um, generally the access point will believe that if any packet is dropped uh, between itself and the mobile node, that was probably caused by noise, so it, it can then take that packet out of its buffer and attempt 